Hastings photo album. He is very proud of his bag. Daily Flicker, July 30, 1935. In this issue, we are Chap, we received a new letter from ABC in the 10 o'clock post. Where and when? In Cheston. Today. Today? I'll inform the population immediately. I'll check the train times. Call me back. Hastings, what you are doing is an absolute disaster. That is no way to pack suitcases. Heavens, we must hurry. We have to get to Churston before the murder. These things, order and method are always necessary, regardless of the circumstances. Okay, okay. I'll let you pack them. All the same. It really is a disgrace to leave your belongings in such a mess. Voila! It only took a minute. Poirot, you were right. I've just consulted the ABC guide. There's no hurry. The next train doesn't leave till 11.45. You see, there is no need to hurry. We will not be in Cherston until tomorrow morning. After the murder. But why has the murderer warned us so late? It's not what he usually does. Did he do it on purpose? Very good question, Hastings. We should also compare the letter we have just received with the other two. Although I have very little doubt about what we will find. Right. Let us compare this new letter with the second one. Let us examine this more closely. Certain characters in the two letters may have similar defects. Yes, this eye is weird. Right, let us compare this with the other letter. Yes, the eye characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. Yes, the A appears to be quite unusual. Right, let us compare this with the other letter.
That's right. The egg characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. Let us examine the characters in this world. Hmm, the W is not printed properly. Right, let us compare this with the other letter. Of course, the W characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. My theory was right. These two letters were written with the same typewriter. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. The letter should have arrived in time. The postmark shows that it was sent three days ago. However, our man made a mistake in the address, which explains the delay. All the same, the post office took their time correcting the error. Come on, Poirot. Your address is not quite as well known as that of Scotland Yard. Poirot, the telephone. It must be Jap. I have some news from Churchton. Bad news, I'm afraid. Sir Carmichael Clark was murdered while out on his evening walk. Sir Carmichael Clark? The name is familiar to me. He was a famous throat specialist, one of the best in London. A wealthy man. He retired to Combeside, a beautiful house by the sea. He collected antiques. Are you going there? Yes, let's meet on the train. The victim is called Sir Carmichael Clark, one of the best throat specialists in London. The body was still warm when we found it. If we had been warned earlier, we definitely could have saved him. It appears that the murderer made a mistake when he wrote his letter. A mistake? Lucky for him. And what if he did it on purpose? No, no. He's defined his madcap rules and he's sticking to them. It's a matter of pride for him. Shall we go up to the house, Poro? You go, my friends. I will come soon. Sir Carmichael's throat was cut. It's a clean incision, a professional murder. The gravel on the path has been sprayed with blood that covers a conical shape to Rhea, which starts at the body and becomes wider as it moves further from the bush. Apart from the wound to the throat, 
The body isn't touched. No cuts, no bruises. An ABC guide. The murderer's customary signature, covered in blood this time. Jap has emptied the victim's pockets and has laid out their contents on this piece of wax cloth. Nothing appears to be missing from this wallet. An oriental dragon. It's an old piece, much older than the pocket watch on which it was fastened. A signet ring, very probably with the Clark family's coat of arms. It is pointless. The body is just in front of a bush, one of the only bushes in the surrounding area. The vegetation behind the bush has been trampled. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Sir Carmichael had his back to the bush when the killer cut the throat from behind. A fatal blow that sprayed blood of a range of more than one meter. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Have you finished, Poirot? Chief Inspector, many questions remain unanswered, but I am certain of one thing. The killer has prepared his crime very carefully. Quite right. He must have known Sir Carmichael's movements well to plan such an attack. The murderer struck with terrible savagery. Yes, blood flowed. It's the first time he's attacked a man. He armed himself accordingly. Have you spoken to the victim's family, Chief Inspector? I've spoken to the brother, Franklin Clark. I didn't get much out of him. He's yours. I must get the body removed. This place is very calming.
The site is exceptional. It is easy to imagine that Sir Carmichael used to enjoy stopping here every evening. To be honest, this inspector seems rather obtuse. I'm counting on your friend Poirot to catch my brother's murderer. Ah, here he is now. Please, Mr. Poirot. Mr. Poirot, this is my brother's secretary, Miss Thora Gray. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Poirot. Would you like some tea? No, thank you, mademoiselle. I find it hard to digest. There is something very viril about him. Franklin Clark is an adventurer, the sort of man that women like. There is something elegant about her. She has good taste, except perhaps in her choice of jewelry. Please excuse me, I have to take care of Lady Clark. My brother's wife is gravely ill. You will probably want to question her, but I fear that it won't be possible today. I insist, Mr. Clark. Please allow me to remind you that this is a murder inquiry. Unfortunately, she is much too ill. She doesn't even know her husband is dead. I'm very sorry, but I'm afraid it's out of the question. Of course, I understand. Someone set a trap for your brother. Who was familiar with his habits? Everybody knew he took his evening walk at half past eight, and that he always followed the same path. Was it your favorite novel? The Railway Children by Edith Nesbitt. I know it's a children's book, but it's enthralling. So it was you who found the body? Yes, along with the gardener. Have you seen any strangers around the house recently? No. As far as I know, nobody has been near the house. <gasps> Miss Clark! Oh, Lady Clark must have fallen from her chair! I have to help Miss Gray get her up. Hastings, while our host is gone, let's examine the drawing room. But, Poirot, a gentleman shouldn't... 
I take full responsibility. All you have to do is to leave the drawing room door ajar and let me know if anyone is coming. It is an emperor. His place at the center of the table is probably symbolic. A tiger. A crane? A dragon. A turtle. Dragon, dragon, dragon. Sir Carmichael showed himself to be very consistent in his collection's theme. Comside's private collection, purchases since 1920. The catalogue for Sir Carmichael Clark's collection. is richly decorated. Dragon, dragon, dragon. Sir Carmichael showed himself to be very consistent in his collection's theme. locked. Sir Carmichael's collection could rival that of a major museum. Turtle, the dragon, the crane, and the tiger. I think I've already seen this motif somewhere. Thank you. 
The position of each motif is correct, but they are not turned the same way as on the table. The position of each motif is correct, but they are not turned the same way as on the table. I think I heard a bang. Could it be this cupboard? This is interesting. These daggers are only ceremonial weapons. I do not think that the crime weapon is here. Ernest Luggan, MD, Brighton Cancer Institute, 201 Dusk Road, Brighton, Sussex. To Sir Carmichael Clark, MD, Comsite, Churston, Devon. Brighton, 1935, January the 5th. As a man of science, I owe it to you to be completely frank. Lady Clark, your wife is suffering from a generalized terminal cancer. I confess I didn't suspect anything like that during the first exams. But with the test results I have received today, there is unfortunately no place for doubt. I estimate that Lady Clark's life expectancy is no more than one year. Hospitalization would not help in her case, so I advise you to keep her at home and provide her with as much morphine as required to ease her last moments. Yours sincerely, Ernest Logan. Here's Miss Gray. Sorry to keep you waiting. Lady Clark's condition requires regular care. I believe you want to ask me a few questions. Indeed, mademoiselle. This porcelain is remarkable. Is it old? It's about three centuries old, I believe. Wait, let me find the reference. She appears to be very flustered. She's unable to hide her emotion, and her makeup has been disturbed. I think that this young woman has just been kissed. Here? Teapot with Black Dragon, Gangshi period, end of the 17th century. 
It is a rare piece with unusual colors. You have a good knowledge of art history. Acquired while working with Sir Carmichael. I used to help him manage his collection and choose his new acquisitions. And sometimes, he used to give you a piece as a gift, is that right? Gift? What do you mean? I am referring to your brooch. This old brooch? Mademoiselle, you know perfectly well. I am talking about the magnificent brooch you were wearing earlier. Yes, you're right. Sir Carmichael did give it to me. He valued my work. How could I refuse? He would have been offended. You took it off because of Lady Clark, am I right? Indeed. Lady Clark does not like this jewel. Why upset someone who is so gravely ill? I see. Maybe Lady Clark is a little jealous. Mr. Poirot, do not be mistaken. There was nothing going on between Sir Carmichael Clark and myself. It's just... How should I say? Well, Lady Clark is very suspicious. Insanely suspicious. Wearing this old brooch in front of her would have caused her unnecessary suffering. Don't you think? I am not blaming you, mademoiselle. Have you seen any strangers hanging around in the past few days? No. Nobody has been near Comside. Tell me what happened last night. After dinner? Well, I did some sewing and then I went to bed. I was woken by the telephone at 11. I heard Franklin Clark speaking with the gardener. They left with some lanterns and they found the body. Am I right thinking that something is going on between you and Franklin? How dare you ask me such a question? Mademoiselle, it is difficult to hide things from me. He kissed you earlier, did he not? My goodness, with Sir Carmichael's death, I was feeling so awful, so worried. I was unable to resist. I am not judging you, Mademoiselle. Miss Gray, if I may be so bold, please do not take offense. My friend has rather unusual methods, but all he wants is to find the murderer. Yes, I understand. I must rest. Please excuse me. Earlier, you asked me to watch the living room door for you. I don't wish to be indiscreet, but sometimes a gentleman stumbles upon a secret without intending to. That is sometimes the case. And I saw Franklin Clark kissing Miss Gray at the foot of the stairs. Do you think this is a common occurrence? No, I saw emotion, intensity. I think it was their first kiss. Well done, mon ami. Well spotted. However, I don't think I completely understand this business. Why did Sir Carmichael not defend himself? He appeared to have been active and strong. The murderer did not give him a chance. Let us try and reconstruct the scene. Sir Clark is taking his customary walk. Our killer is hiding behind a bush. The old man walks quietly along the gravel path. Then he turns towards the sea to gaze at it. The killer leaves his hiding place on the right-hand side. He approaches silently over the grass. 
Then he throws himself on his prey and cuts the poor man's throat. He then lays down the ABC before leaving. Everything appears to match the crime scene, Mon cher Hastings. That is exactly what happened. Just a minute, I'm getting dressed. Mr. Kirst, have you recently returned from Churston? Uh, yes, yes, indeed I have. Have you seen the papers? And to think that you might have rubbed shoulders with the killer. Imagine that. Mr. Cust, are you all right? You don't seem well. My apologies. My throat is burning and my head feels heavy. It's ever since the war, you know. Since my injury, my head has never been the same. Poirot, it's a pleasure to be with you again after all these years. I looked for a gift to thank you, and I found this propelling pencil. An authentic collector's item. You spoil me, mon ami. And you more so by sharing investigations. Do not underestimate the help you are to me, Hastings. Intellect is not everything. There is also goodwill, and you are not short of that. Later, I will ask you to help me tidy up the room and bring some chairs. Our guest will be here soon. Ah. Is Thora Grey coming? Naturally. She is a fascinating young woman, n'est-ce pas? Oh, come on, Poirot. I'm a married man. And Miss Grey has already been courted by Franklin Clark. Poirot, our guests will be here soon. We must prepare ourselves. I should take advantage of the silence to examine them. <laughs> 